different message all together to you. You, as a believer, has a commission. You have a commission, you have a mission. And that commission and mission was left for you by Jesus Christ on his departure. There is nothing as respectable as the words of a departing father. If he's taking a trip or he's going anywhere and he leaves a final word behind and says, do this, do that. How you treat what he says is invariably going to be interpreted and how much respect you have for him. It's not just about the dramas that you put up when he's around. It's what you do with his words when he's not around, when he's not there. And so when Jesus was living, he clearly said to us, Go ye into the world and preach the gospel. This was a commission, and that is the mandate of everyone who calls himself a child of God. We all are waiting for the coming of Christ. Interestingly, Jesus says, the word of God says, The gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. And so we are invariably the ones that are holding the end of time. We are seem to be we seem to be controlling and influencing the end of time because our lack of readiness to take the gospel and share it with people becomes the reason why a lot of things are not happening. And the Bible tells us also in the book of Mark, Mark, Mark 16 that as they left where Jesus had given them the commission, as they went out preaching the word, the Lord was confirming his words with signs following. So some of the miracles that also are not happening in your life today they are not happening as a result of the fact that you are not living in line with the commission and the instructions of Jesus. He has clearly said to us, go ye into the world and preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Now there is no mincing words there. When he says go ye into the world, preach the gospel, he means go preach the gospel. Amen. Amen. Now that's your mandate. That's your commission. That's the instruction heaven has left for you to obey. Now, I'm going to read the scripture out, Mark 16, and the later portion of the book of Mark, that's where I'm going to read. Because I want to read and show you a lot of the things that are tied to this single commission. I'll begin my reading from verse 15 of Mark 16, and it says, he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And so we see, it is in the power and the readiness for us to preach the gospel that we save the world, that we save people. The Lord people have their own philosophy of how the world can be saved. This is God's philosophy. You preach the gospel, you save people. If you don't preach the gospel, you condemn people. He that believeth not shall be damned. And so if you do not give them what to believe, how would you even secure the salvations in their lives in the first place? 16, 17, Mark 16, 17 reads, And these signs shall follow them that believe. First, you brought the believing into their lives by bringing the gospel to them. It is the word that you brought to them that they believed on. The Bible says, Faith cometh by hearing, and by hearing of the word of God. So, if signs must follow the lives of people, it's anchored on your readiness to take the word of God to them. These signs must shall follow them that believe, and believing comes after they have heard the word. Go ye into the world, preach the gospel, he that believeth. So if you don't preach the gospel, you don't find the one that believe. If you don't find the ones that believe, then you will not find signs following. So it's all tied to you. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name, shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, and they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Verse 19, very importantly, And so then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Now watch this. And they went forth and preached everywhere. They went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. The Lord working with them. So if they didn't go preaching, then signs will follow. If they didn't go preaching, so signs will follow. Why is the Lord confirming the word? Because he said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. When you preach the gospel, then you will find people that will believe. 
But you find people that we believe, signs will now follow those that believe. And so when they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord began to walk with them, confirming those words with what? With signs. That implies that in the same context of that scripture, men began to believe. People began to believe. The apostles themselves began to believe. Doubting fellows began to believe. Unbelievers, they began to believe. The unfaithful, they began to believe. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the words with signs following. My decree on you today is that God will begin to confirm his words in your life. Amen. As you live and you begin to manifest the things that God has instructed you within the context of your commission. I'm talking about your personal commission. Every one of us have a ministry given to you by God. And that ministry is contained in the context of this scripture. Go ye into all the world. These signs shall follow them that believe. It is not caught now for just a few folks. It's for every one of us in the house of God. These signs shall follow them that believe. So while dealing with the obedience to this commission, I want to deal with the subject matter, know your message. Can I hear somebody say, know your message? Know your message. Because in knowing your message enables you to effectively go to the world. Because if you must go to the world to preach, you must have a message that you want to communicate with the world. You must have something that you want to tell the world. You must have something you have to say. You can't just go to the world without a message. You need to understand what God wants you to say. Now, we rem remember, if you, if you will, when we read Acts of the Apostles chapter 9, the beginning of the ministry of Paul, the Apostle, and what happened to him and how he encountered Jesus on the way to Damascus, you know, and he encountered Jesus on that way, the Bible says that he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Why do you persecute me? That's Acts of the Apostles chapter 9 verse 4. Now read the next verse, verse 5. And he said, who art thou, Lord? He was asking, but he recognized this must be a mighty person to have hit me down and blind me, but bigger than I am. So he said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the priest. Now verse 6 of that scripture says, And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. I remember pointing us to the scripture that there is what you must do. The first thing that Paul looked for or sought for was God, what's my assignment? God, what's my mission? God, what's my job? It's not enough for you to be called. You need to be called and assigned. If God calls you, he has to assign you. If God calls you, he has to give you a responsibility. If God calls you, he has to give you a task. So the question I'm asking a lot of us folks right now, sitting down, listening to me, hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit, is what is your responsibility? What is your task? What is your message? Have you asked him? Have you found out from him what he wants you to share? What he wants you to bear? What he wants you, what he wants you to care for? Have you asked him? Have you communed with him? Have you understood his vision for your life? Because if you do not understand his vision for your life, you will be living a troubled life. But where there is no vision, and the people do what? The people perish. So there is disaster. There is danger in not understanding God's mission for your life. Don't tell me you're not a pastor. Don't tell me you're not an evangelist. Don't tell me you're not a deacon. Don't tell me you're not anointed and appointed and, and, and ordained. No. The point is, once you become a believer in the house of God, you have a commission. You have a mission. You have an assignment. You have a responsibility. He said, go and you, must, you will be told what you must do. So like I said, it's not an optional demand. It is something you need to find out. You need to know what that is. You need to understand what your mission is. For today, we're not talking about the general mission and the general responsibility. Our focus and our target is, do you know what your message is? If you're called to function as an evangelist, do you know what your message is? If you're called to be maybe a pastor, do you know what your message is? If you're called into the ministry of health, do you know what your message is? If you're called to be a singer, do you know what your message is? If you don't know what your message is, you can't put together lyrics. That's why some singers can't write their own songs. They can only sing other people's songs because they don't know what their message is. If you know what your message is, you can give birth to the lyrics of your own song because you understand what you've been assigned to communicate. You understand what you've been called to do. God wants to show you what you must do. Now, he told Simon Peter, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Feed my lamb. He tells you the same thing. Feed my sheep. 
Every time you come in contact with another brother in the Lord, another sister, maybe even a non-believer, you have a mandate to feed them. But the point is, what in the world are you going to feed somebody when you don't know what food you carry? So what's your message? How can you hand over a meal to somebody when you have no idea what kind of meal you carry? You need to understand, what kind of food do I have in my, in my hand that I can feed somebody with? If I am going to share the gospel with my neighbor and the Lord tells me, he's appointed me to be an overseer or a shepherd, somebody, after his heart, I will feed them with knowledge and understanding. Good. What knowledge am I possessing? What understanding do I carry? What wisdom do I have? What is my message? What has God appointed me on earth to say to people? What has God ordained me to say to people? What has God assigned me to say to people? There are folks there who are out there just lifting up whatever. You see, some of us think that maybe because you're a believer, you're going to be able to teach the whole Bible. Unfortunately for you, the Bible is too large, larger than your capacity to share all of the topics. You can teach a lot of things in the Bible. You can touch this and touch this and touch that. But you better choose and know early to be proficient with the key message and assignment. Everything else will flow in line. But if you don't know what your major message is in the body, you won't know what to share. People have to come to you saying, hey, this guy is an authority in this dimension. He's an authority in this subject. Because when you understand what your key message is, there are a lot of things that it enables you to do. It enables you to study. Because, of course, if I don't understand what subject matter I'm going to study, every time I turn through the Bible, I want to read everything, like pick everything, hook, line, and sinker, just drop everything into my system, I won't have a direct, a direct focus. But if I understand my key message, I will want to study around my message. Because I understand that's the assignment. God has put it in me to teach people about this subject. God has put it in me. Listen, you see, purpose, the overall purpose of your preaching it's not the same as understanding the message and the approach which you use to attain the same thing. You see, we all have the mandate to bring people into the kingdom of God. We all have the mandate to witness to people to be born again and to be saved. But let me say this to you, that while somebody else can come and preach the message of healing and bring people into the kingdom by salvation, someone else preaches the message of prosperity and brings the same people into the same salvation. Another person preaches the message of grace and brings the people into the same salvation. Another person teaches the message of, of redemption, brings the people into the same salvation. Someone else is teaching the works and brings the people into the same salvation. You know, Paul said, Paul said, faith without works is dead. And James said, show me your faith. You show me your, your faith by your works. You see, James has his message. His emphasis, his emphasis is on what you do. James talk about your hearing and not and being a forgetful hearer or not being a doer. The key theme of James' message is do, do, do. That's James. You know, James was like, hey, do, 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 do. That was James' message. Don't be a forgetful hearer. Be a doer of the word. Be a doer of what you hear. Be a doer, be a doer. He says, if you see your brother hungry and you're telling grace to you, peace be, be to you, you know, the Lord bless you, the Lord give you, and you don't give him what to eat, then something is wrong with you. That's James' philosophy. James believes that rather than lay hands on somebody and say, receive food in the name of Jesus, James' own teaching principle is that you go back to your drawer and give that person what to eat. That's James. James believes in the doing. James' ministry was in the doing. James was not with, oh yeah, I'm a man of faith. James is going to tell you, okay, you're a man of faith. I want to see your faith by your works. Paul will tell you, well, Abraham was justified by faith and without work. You know, he will tell you, by grace are you saved through faith. It's not by works. That's Paul. But they are all preaching the same gospel, the same message, saving people, bringing them into, into, the, into the body of Christ, into the fall of Christ. They are not having any conflicts. You might say, but that pastor said this. Yes, that pastor is talking about his own message. The point is you, as an average believer, what is your own message? What has God assigned you to talk about? What has God assigned you to pass on to the believer? What has God assigned you to communicate with people, to share with people? What do you think God wants you to say? If somebody comes to you and is crying, you know, what does God want you to say to that person? If somebody comes to you and says, well, I, I, I committed sin yesterday, what does God want you to say to that person? That's one of, some of the things you need to understand. You need to know what your message is. You need to get to know what your message is. Praise God, somebody. I will give you pastors according to my heart, which will feed you with knowledge and with understanding. Now, in Jeremiah 1 verse 9, the Lord came to the prophet Jeremiah and called him, and called him for the very first time. Hear what the Lord said to him. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth 
And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. I have put my words in thy mouth. From that moment, Jeremiah began to know what his message was. Prior to this time in which the Lord touched the mouth of Jeremiah, what was Jeremiah's speech? Jeremiah's speech was, Oh Lord, I am a, I'm a child. I'm a, I'm a child. That was Jeremiah's dialogue. Jeremiah was never optimistic. Jeremiah was never uh, uh, serious. Jeremiah was afraid. Didn't know what to say. Verse 6 of Jeremiah 1, 6. Jeremiah said, Then said I, Ah Lord, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. That was Jeremiah was. <laughs> a child. You know, verse 7. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. So, what message do you carry? Are you carrying a message that God give you to carry? Or you're carrying a message that somebody else probably handed over to you? Or you're carrying a message that you just need? You need to learn to go down on your knees and pray. And communicate with God and say, Mighty God, I need to know what my assignment is. If I'm going to be a motivational speaker, how am I going to do it? If I'm going to be a believer giving counsel, how am I going to do it? If I'm going to be somebody sharing my testimony, how am I going to do it? If I'm going to do the word of God, what word have you commanded me? What word have you put in my mouth? What word have you placed in me to speak? I need to know what word that you have put in me to speak. I need to know what word that you have commanded me to speak. This is very important. This is very critical. This is not an option. You must know what your message was and what your message is. Jesus Christ was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Every time you see him, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus would come and give a few parables to people. He would tell them, and the kingdom of God is likened unto a man. And the kingdom of God is likened unto that. And the kingdom of God is like this. And the kingdom of God is like a woman. And the kingdom of God is like that. And the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ came with a mandate and a gospel of the kingdom. And he said this gospel of the kingdom was preached in all the world. So he had his own message. The question is, what about your own message? John was a forerunner of Jesus. He said, I'm the voice of him that cries in the wilderness, that makes straight the way of the Lord. I'm a forerunner. I'm a preparer. So you know, you need to ask yourself, what am I? Am I uh, if it, because if you, like I said, it's going to enhance your study. And when it enhances your study, it will, it will enhance your growth. When it enhances your study, it will enhance your growth. When it enhances your growth, it will enhance your focus. When it enhances your focus, it will enhance your impact. Your study, your growth, your impact, your focus, your concentration, your build-up. And when all these things happen, it will enhance your result. The kind of result that you end up having in your life will come as a result of this. So, Peter had his gospel tied out to the circumcised, preaching to the, to the Jews. Cleared out, he understood what his message was. Called by the same Jesus, but he knew where he was assigned. He knew where his responsibility was targeted. He didn't go trying to do what Paul was called to do. He knew he found his area. He stuck with his area. He operated with his area. A lot of ministers you see beginning to succeed today are ministers who have struggled and struggled and struggled until they discover where they actually are supposed to focus. You know how Paul put it? Paul said, less happily, I find myself building on another, on another man's foundation. That's the way Paul put it. Because I can be up here now, doing what I'm doing, just thinking I'm doing my job. Meanwhile, I'm, I'm, I'm doing someone else's job. I need to know what my job is. So that's why I'm saying, know your message. Do you know your message? Do you know your message? Can you figure out what your message is? Can you tell what your message is? You need to know what your message is. You need to find out what your message is. I know my message. Do you know your message? Have you been given your message? Paul knew that his message was assigned was, to, was for the Gentiles and for the, and for the uncircumcised. And Paul continued to pass that message across. Continued to deliver the message, preaching, saying it, moving and over and over. Paul kept communicating to the uncircumcised. Do you know your message? Do you know your message? Do you know what God has called and assigned you to say? Now I'm going to read one scripture. But I'm going to read last, yeah, Exodus 7 verse 16, when the Lord called Moses, yet it's yet, yeah, what Moses said, and thou shalt say unto him, the Lord God of the Hebrews has sent me unto thee, saying, let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness, and the whole hitherto shall, hitherto thou wouldest not hear. Now he says, listen, 
Moses, they want to be a deliverer. You want to heal people. You want to see miracles happen in your ministry. You want to see results in your ministry. You need to know what you ought to say. Your message is God tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And as long as that message remains in you, and as long as you have that message, let my people go, that message is going to be powerful enough for Pharaoh to resist. Too powerful. Pharaoh cannot withstand the content of that message. That message can bring 10 plagues in Egypt if they don't listen to you. That message can create a deliverance for the children of Israel. That message can feed them in the wilderness. That message can make water come out of their rock. That message can give them more food in the wilderness. That message can make them survive even in the hardest terrain that they walk through. That message of let my people Go. Just understand the core fact of what God is sending you to say. Gives power to what you're saying. The boldness is not about how many chapters, how many verses, how many scriptures. Oh, I need a deeper mystery. Come on. Listen, there are even bigger mysteries when you know what your message is. All you need to know is in the simplicity of the message. What has God sent me to say to Pharaoh? What has God sent me to say to that woman? What has God sent me to say to this man? What has God sent me to say? Because if you ever know what God says you should say, there is always power to what you are to say. Nothing can withstand it. Nothing can. The waters of Egypt turned into blood because Moses knew what his message was. Locusts, wild honey, frogs, they were filled Egypt because Moses knew what his message was. They couldn't resist it. They couldn't resist it. If God preserved your life like he did for Moses, if God saved you like he saved Moses, if God called you like he called Moses, remember, it is always for a purpose and you must find why that, 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 that voice is, why that message is. You need to learn to come to that burning bush. The presence of the consuming fire. The presence of the almighty God. Until you get what you ought to say. I like the way Moses did put it. Because Moses himself, he did ask. He said, God, if they ask me, who sent me? What do I have to say? He said, listen, tell them I am that I have sent you. I am the one who is sending you to deliver the message to Pharaoh. And let me say this, nothing could withstand it. Trees could not withstand it. Six, six stone to serpent because a man knew what his message was. Miracles can happen, signs follow. But you know what you've been commissioned to say. Even in your family, have you, do, have you found out what message God has put in you for your family? Have you found out what message God has given to you for your friends? Have you found out what message God has given to you for your peer group? Have you found out what message God has given to you for your school? Have you found out what message God has given to you for your businesses? Because until you find out that message, you will only continue to exist in that atmosphere like Moses was existing until he found the message. He said, hey, I can find the presence of a burning bush. There's a flame there. I want to go and see why the bush is not born. Behold, he went into the very presence of God. You need to have your own encounter also. You need to meet God also. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to meet God also. You need to encounter God also. Let God tell me. Let God tell you. Let God tell us what is our message. What does God want you to say to your husband? What does God want you to say to your wife? What does God want you to say to your brother, your sister, your father, your mother, your uncle, your auntie, your neighbors, your, your colleagues, your, 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 your colleague at work, and even, even the enemies that you even think you have, your fellows in the street and your neighbors, what does God want you to say? Because you can go around complaining about them. The point is you haven't had the right word. If you've got the right message, you can be very surprised how much people can be born again. Who have ever thought that Paul could be changed? But when he had the right word, it is hard for you to kick against the praise. He said, Lord, what would you have me do? He understood from the message that he was fighting against himself. If you kick nails, you hurt yourself. If you keep kicking nails, you hurt yourself. Simple. The Lord didn't need 10 chapters to communicate that same commission. He just knew the right message. And Saul broke and said, Lord. And the Bible says, anyone who calls him Lord shall be saved. That moment of admitting Jesus Christ as Lord became the salvation point of Saul. And Saul began to find out, what do you want me to do? And God said, go wait, and I will tell you what you must do. Saul found out what he ought to do. And he began to preach. The question is, have you found yours? If you haven't, we're going to pray right now. Keep praying. Not just today, not just in here. May God let you know what your message is. What has God commissioned you to say to people? What has God commissioned you to deliver to this generation? You need to find that out. Do not just exist in this generation, but be relevant in this generation. Know what you ought to say. Hallelujah. Can we rise on our feet? Can we rise?